I V M. Hello, welcome, Khushamadid. You're listening to the Note with me, Maharu Khanat. We're done with the big electoral exercise, the biggest in the world, and we have Mr. Narendra Modi back as the Prime Minister of the country. One has to give credit where it's due. It is well and truly a Modi wave. It is nothing short of what sophologists would call electoral magic, a decisive mandate and one that clearly shows his connect with the masses of the country. More importantly, it shows how the Indian voter, or at least an overwhelming majority of Indian voters, don't see any alternative to Narendra Damodar Das Modi. Speaking of alternatives, hours before May twenty third, Congress leader, please note, I'm not calling him president, but Congress leader Rahul Gandhi was truly being considered an alternative to Narendra Modi. Now, of course, he stepped down from the post of president. It's another matter that not a single Congress leader is willing to accept that resignation. The Congress Working Committee or the CWC is begging him to stay on as the president, but it seems the Gandhi sign is intent on stepping down. And that's the point I want to make on the note today. If Mr. Gandhi is listening to this, then hear me loud and clear. You must step down as the president of the Grand Old Party, and I have very, very strong reasons for saying so. I disagree with Lalu Prasad Yadav when he says that by stepping down, Rahul Gandhi will only strengthen the Sangh Parivar. I disagree with Sheila Dixit when she says that Rahul stepping down will result in great losses for the Congress Party in the upcoming elections. Just FYI for Miss Dixit, and I think she knows this pretty well, Rahul was the Congress president, and the party fared miserably in the Lok Sabha elections in the two states that go to polls later this year. That's Maharashtra and Haryana. And now for my five reasons on why Mr. Gandhi is finally doing the right thing by stepping down. Reason number one: He has to lose the privilege tag. Now I don't care too much for the dynast barb against Rahul because, frankly, there are far more dynasts in the BJP than there are in the Congress Party. It is that idea that leadership is closed for anyone but Rahul Gandhi in the Congress Party that is extremely bothersome to me. I simply cannot understand this Congress view that Rahul Gandhi is the only one who can lead the party. This psychophancy is actually doing a great disservice to him. It makes him privileged in the eyes of the youth. It gives him no credit for any work that he might have done, and it makes the Congress Party appear to be very weak as an organization with a huge leadership vacuum. I do believe that the party has some very experienced leaders who must be showcased. It will actually give people more reasons to vote for the Congress Party. Reason number two. Rahul Gandhi has to be the leader who has the solutions to India's problems. Now, Rahul Gandhi's campaign for 2019 was lackluster. It carried no hope for the youth of the country. You know, Indira Gandhi famously said, "Log kehte hain Indira ko hatao. Main kehti hoon, garibi hatao." Cut to 2019, and that kind of ingenuity was sorely missing from Rahul's pet slogan, "Chokidar chor hai." It failed to stick against a leader like Modi, whose integrity is hard to question. The Chokidar attack was uninspiring, and since it was used so much, it lost its punch and became stale. On the other side, the Modi Shah bandwagon was churning out one slogan after the next as their teams constantly gauged the mood of the nation. And guess what? The slogan stuck. Beat me, be Chokidar, which was a direct retaliation to Rahul's attack, or the other one. Modi hai, to mumkin hai. My question is, as the voice of the opposition and someone who said he wanted to be prime minister, why didn't Rahul look for slogans that gave hope to the unemployed, that gave hope to the distressed farmers, that gave hope to the minorities, to the Dalits? No slogan came, and that's what needs to change. Number three, he has to sound credible and win trust. To give him some credit, Rahul did come up with the Nyay scheme. Yes, the scheme that proposed seventy-two thousand rupees annually given to the poorest of the poor. But Rahul did not successfully articulate how he would achieve it. As a result, people did not believe him or the Congress Party or the fact that they could pull it off. That is the trust that Rahul Gandhi has to win now. Number four, 
don't forget secularism. This is the one thing that has baffled me the most. In order to shake the tag of the Congress party being the minority appeaser, Rahul Gandhi started what is being called as temple touring. Why? It looked fake and it looked contrived. The 2019 of India would rather have him be himself than try to be somebody he's not. When Mr Modi in his victory speech said that not a single party raised the slogan of secularism it was a tight slap across the face of every leader and every political party who fell for soft hindutva Rahul Gandhi must introspect on why he forgot that India is a secular nation with that he lost the vote of all those who believe in the idea of a secular India number 5 become the voice of the nation Keep your ear to the ground Mr Rahul Gandhi gauge the mood of the nation and react to it yes on a daily basis on an hourly basis create campaigns around it be an opposition that voices the angst worries and concerns of the people of india and yes in order to do this rahul you must step down i hope this is not a tantrum You have to earn the trust of the people of India. You have to prove you're worthy to lead this country. So I would say step down to step up to the challenge or else if you can't then make way for someone else. Namaste, main hu Saurabh Chandra aur main Pranay Kotasthane. Jab mehfil khatam hote hote darwaze ke bahar pulia ke upar hum duniya bhar ki jatil samasyaon ko solve karne mein lag jate hain to ho jati hai pulia bazi. अब आजकल के अपार्टमेंट वालों ने तो कभी पुलिया देखी नहीं होगी पर आप फीलिंग तो समझ ही सकते हैं तो आइए शामिल हो जाइए हमारी पुलियाबाजी में जहाँ प्रणय और मैं एक से एक इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक्स की तह तक जाएंगे आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस बिटकॉइन पाकिस्तान मेडिकल एजुकेशन करेंसी क्राइसिस कभी हम दोनों के साथ और अक्सर स्पेशल एक्सपर्ट गेस्ट की कंपनी में सुनिए हमें आई की वेबसाइट ऐप या अपने फेवरेट पॉडकास्टिंग प्लेटफॉर्म आरोप हर दूसरे हफ्ते Hi, I'm Anupam Gupta, B50 on Twitter, and listen into the Equity Sahiya podcast brought to you by Motila Loanswell Asset Management Company. The Equity Sahiya podcast offers deep investment insights into the potential of many sectors in India, which are growing and have a lot to offer for your portfolio. New episodes out every Tuesday on the IBM Podcast app or any other app where you get your podcast from. <laughs> 